In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Canon EOS R5 for photography. What's up everyone, Pete Coco here, and if you have or recently acquired a Canon EOS R5, congratulations, you've got an awesome camera. And this is one of the most feature-packed cameras out on the market now. It is so feature-packed that it could actually be a little overwhelming at first when you get it. I know that I was a bit overwhelmed with it when I first got it. But you can save a lot of time and a lot of stress and a lot of energy if you take time to set it up right. So that's what this video today is all about. I want to show you how I have my buttons, physical buttons mapped, and then I'm going to show you some key menu settings that I like to have mapped out as well. Now I'm not going to go over every single setting in the menu, but I am going to go over how I have all my buttons mapped and how I have key settings in the menus so that I get the most out of the camera. Before we even dive into the menus, I want to go over how I have my buttons mapped. So the first thing I want to tell you is, you'll see my camera might look bigger than yours, but that's just because I have a vertical grip on it. A vertical grip is an option you can buy for the camera. You don't have to get it. Um, it's a little pricey, but I like having it for portrait photography, primarily for the extra battery life, but it also gives you a really cool vertical shutter button. So when you're taking vertical shots, it just makes it a lot easier to frame them and you have a shutter button as well as many of the other function buttons. So that's what that's about. If you, you can unscrew this and take it off and then it's just the standard R5 camera. It's the same one that you have. It's not a different model. So let's talk about all the buttons on the camera, starting with the top of the camera. Now you have the first most important button. Hopefully you know what that button does. It's the shutter button. That's how you take a picture. Right in front of, oh, I'm sorry, right behind the shutter button is a button that says MFN. This is a multi-function button. You can map this to do a variety of things. And in fact, most of the buttons on the camera can be mapped to do a variety of features. So I wanna show you how, how I have them mapped first, and then I'll show you the menu you go to later in order to actually map them. I have the MFN button, the multi-function button, set to turn eye detection on and off. Now, eye detection, if you're taking pictures of people, you want it on, so you're gonna leave that on. But sometimes you wanna quickly turn it off if you're going from shooting a person to say a landscape, or if you're walking down the block with your family and you go from taking a picture of your kids or your spouse or your significant other and then you want to take a picture of a scene. So it's easy to turn that on and off. So that's the first thing you want to do. Right behind the multifunction button you have this front command dial they call it which is just a little spinny wheel and that's going to be mapped uh, out of the box to control your shutter speed so you can raise and lower your shutter speed value. I just recommend you leave that as it is. You can change that if you want. It can also become the aperture value if you prefer. But I, I like to just leave it the way it is. Behind that, you have a red button, which is your direct movie record button. So if you want to take a quick movie without having to go and change from the uh, still mode to the movie mode, you just press that and it'll go right into recording a movie. It's a very fast way to get a quick movie. Behind that is a little button that says lock. And this button, I discovered, I didn't even realize it was there, I'm, I'm ashamed to say, until I inadvertently pressed it. And then I was like, why can't I change like some of my settings? And it just kept saying lock. So I knew I inadvertently locked the camera and it took me a little time to figure out, oh, there's a lock button on there. So make sure it's not locked, otherwise there's settings you're not gonna be able to change. The idea of that is if you want to keep yourself from accidentally changing a setting, you can lock out certain settings that you know are gonna be the same for say an entire shoot. Next, we have the little button here that lights the screen of the camera. Now the cool thing about this is it actually does two things. If you give it a long press, it'll turn on the backlit screen. So if you're shooting at night and you want to see your screen, you just press that and long press it. But if you short press it, just give it a quick press, it'll give you a whole uh, menu. So it'll show you a bunch of the options that are currently set on your camera. So it's really redundant display information, which I think is cool. It'll show your AF mode, your shooting mode, your autofocus mode, your metering, your card, and some video options as well. Right behind that is the mode button. So let's talk about that for a minute. If you press the mode button, you'll see this particular menu shows up. Maybe you can see it there. If not, I'll show you on the screen. 
When you press the mode button, what happens is, is that the camera will let you choose between all of the different modes, meaning program, flexible program, shutter speed priority, aperture priority. And this is an important button because if you're not using C1, C2, C3, which is custom shooting modes, you want to set those up. Custom shooting modes, and I'll link my video specifically on that below in case you wanna check it out. Custom shooting modes means you can map basically every setting that you want the camera to remember. It's pretty much almost every setting. And when you turn the camera back on, it's gonna remember everything you set. So for example, on my camera, I have C1, custom shooting mode number one, is my default studio settings. So when I put it on there, I've mapped into the camera the aperture, the shutter speed, the ISO, uh, raw files that I want the camera to shoot in raw, the picture setting, um, the focus mode, everything that I want the camera to remember is gonna automatically come back up. So when I start a portrait shoot or a headshot shoot, I know the camera is back defaulted to where I'm not gonna have mistakes in my settings. And one of the biggest ones you don't wanna make a mistake with, which seems silly, but I think most photographers have done this once in their own shooting, is forgetting to put the camera on raw file because you wanna shoot raw if you're obviously, especially if you're taking pictures um, and someone's paying you for them. Raw file is the uncompressed file. It's the it is the digital negative. And everyone's been there where you've accidentally shot in JPEG. So in my custom one, C1, it's set that the camera's gonna record in raw and all of that. Now the main difference in my settings when between M, which is manual, and C1, and these are the two settings I use the most for still photography, is that the M setting in manual, I have the camera set for exposure simulation on. Now exposure simulation basically means when you look through the viewfinder or at the screen, exposure simulation is gonna show you exactly what the final image will look like. So if it's underexposed or overexposed, you're gonna see it in real time. This way you can actually compose by changing the aperture and shutter speed and see what the resulting image is gonna look like. This is awesome and obviously this is one of the greatest things about mirrorless cameras. The problem arises though when you're shooting in a studio or when you're shooting with flash because the flash is gonna fire and then you're not going to know what the exposure will look like until it's recorded. So in my C1 setting that I use for my studio, I have exposure simulation off. So what that means is that the viewfinder works much more like a traditional viewfinder in an SLR where the um, scene is gonna look good through the lens, it's gonna look properly exposed, it's gonna look like a traditional viewfinder, and then whatever my settings are, I'm gonna see it after I take the image. Next, let's talk about the buttons on the back of the camera. Now, you have, right behind your thumb here, you have two very important buttons. One is a little grid, that button is your focusing modes. So when you press that, you're gonna get a menu that shows you the autofocus modes. And the mode that you wanna shoot in is primarily the first mode, which is tracking. Leave it right on tracking. This means the camera will track your subject. If you're taking pictures of people, sports pictures, uh, nature, um, your pets, any of this kind of stuff, you want it to track. And you can tweak those settings in the menu, which I'll show you later. Next to that is a little star button. Now I have that button set specifically to control the ISO. One of the things that kind of frustrated me about this camera um, when I first got it is there's no dedicated ISO button. And I understand you can map so many of the buttons the way you want it is why they figured we'll just let people map it how they want. But I do miss having a button that says ISO because it's something I use all the time. However, you can map the little star button on the back of the camera so that if you press it and hold it down, it will change your ISO. So you press it and hold it down, and then you'll see a little um, command dial icon will appear next to ISO, and then you can change it that way. So it's a pretty easy way to set that. Next, you have the AF on button. Press that button, the camera will focus before you hit the, um, the shutter button. And lots of people swear by, we call it back button focus. Uh, I barely ever use it. It's just something that I don't find necessary for what I do. I'm, I'm generally shooting portraits where you know, people aren't moving quite that fast. I feel I need that. Next to that is a very important button, or a lever, I should say. This is your 
autofocus joystick. Now, for some reason, the custom functions are going to have this to do when you first get the camera, it doesn't really do anything, it's off. So what you want to do is you go in the menu, and I'll show you later how to do that, and we want to turn that on so that you can just move this back and forth, roll it around, and the focusing point will move wherever you rotate the joystick. And then if you press it in, it's going to put it right back in the center. Underneath that, we have um, all of the more basic buttons. You have the uh, magnifying glass, which is just to zoom in on images, info. And now what I like to do on info is you can choose the um, amount of info you want to see on the screen. I usually don't like having it so that I see all this info because sometimes I do want to view from the screen as I compose my subject. Although I usually put it up to my eye, I still want to be able to see it from there at times. So I like to have this on the first setting, which just has some info around the corners of the screen without covering the whole screen. But you can, you can change that. There's, there's a bunch of different settings in there where you can see more or less information. Next to that is the quick menu. You press that button and now you can use the touch screen to get into a bunch of the different settings in the camera and that you just leave how it is as well. Then you have the rear thumb wheel which is going to by default be your aperture value control and I suggest leaving that the same and I mean I've been shooting with Canon cameras for like probably more than 20 years now and so I'm very used to having aperture and shutter speed be the front command dial and the rear dial. You can also use this dial will, around the mode button will also change your aperture. So you have some redundancy there. I leave those both to do that. And um, I just use either one depending on where my hand is. Um, but it's, you can map that one of those differently if you want to. I don't, I don't do it on my camera. And um, then you have the playback and the erase button and the set button. Now by default, the set button, if you press it in, in the shooting mode, will also just put the focusing point back in the middle. And again, you can remap that as well. But pretty much everything that uh, outside of what I've told you about, I leave the way it is. That's the top of the camera, that's the back of the camera, and the only other buttons we didn't talk about is your rate button to rate images or to record a voice memo, and your menu button. And those obviously are gonna just, you can, for me, I, again, I leave those um, you can't change the menu button that I know of, but the rate button has some options. I just leave it the way it is. So there you go. That's how I have all of my buttons mapped. Not too complicated, but there's a few little tweaks you want to do. Uh, again, I have the grip on the camera, so a lot of these buttons will be redundantly shown on the grip too. So if you want to, um, or I should say, if you do map the buttons, the cool thing is that they're going to do the same thing on the grip as well. So when you're shooting vertically, you have those same kind of mapping. So like if I press the little star on the grip, I can control my um, ISO because I mapped it in, for example. So it's really cool, very intuitive. Um, that's a lot right there just in the buttons. You want to spend some time tweaking those. And then you're going to obviously have to spend some time as you shoot so that you remember how you mapped it. But that's what's been working really well for me. So now let's go ahead and look in the menus and I'll show you how to map those settings and some other settings in the menu that I like to set. Um, and again, we're not gonna go over every single menu setting, but just what I feel are important to get you going and as the initial setup for your camera. The first thing you'll notice when you press the menu button is there's quite a bit of pages of menus. And you can use the touch screen on the camera which works great, by the way, to choose the menu you want. Now, I'm not using the touch screen because I have the camera plugged into a screen that I'm recording so I can show you, but this is much easier with the touch screen, but you can use the dials also to scroll through the menus. The first thing you want to do is go into the first menu and make sure you're shooting in RAW. Now, a JPEG file, in case you're not sure of the difference, is basically a compressed version of the image. So what the camera does is if you shoot in JPEG, it throws away a ton of the data and then compresses the file into what it thinks is going to be a good representation of what your image is. The problem with shooting JPEGs is that you're losing a, a ton of data and then you're also losing the ability to really adjust it in post. So say you take an image and it's very underexposed. Um, 
In post, if you shoot in RAW, you can use the Canon software or another program like Lightroom or Capture One to pull all of that detail back in. You can lift the shadows and you have an incredible amount of dynamic range, even if it's overexposed. So shooting in RAW is always the best practice, even though RAW is gonna take up a lot more space on a camera like this. One thing you can do is if it's nothing too important, you can shoot RAW on one card and JPEGs on the other card. Sometimes I do that if I'm just going out for the day, uh, taking pictures with my family and just hanging out. I like to have the RAW file just in case, and then I'll probably just use the JPEGs to share with family if it's nothing too serious that I'm working on. Any client work, obviously, you've got to shoot in RAW, and most of the time I do want to shoot in RAW because why not have the best quality? So make sure you're shooting in RAW. Um, aspect ratio, I'm going to skip some things that I don't think we need to discuss right now. Um, but aspect ratio, you can change the kind of shape of the image. So for example, say you want to shoot just for Instagram. Um, you can choose one to one and then the camera will shoot in a square format. If you're set to raw, it'll still retain the other information, but that's what the different ratios are for. It's got a crop ratio. I don't like to do any of that. I just leave it on full, so it's recording the regular full frame of the sensor. Next, in menu number two, you wanna go into ISO speed settings, and I like to just make an, if you're gonna use auto ISO, which again, I have a video on, I'll link it below, you can change the limits of the auto ISO. I don't like to have the auto ISO set to too big a difference because I find that it works much better to keep it just kind of as a fail safe. Because if you have it say the maximum set really, really high, it's gonna go to that default when it needs to and then you're gonna get grainy images you're not gonna wanna use. So I kind of have it tweaked a little bit more into a smaller setting for the auto ISO. And again, usually I'm gonna shoot in, in manual ISO, although sometimes I do like the flexibility of the auto ISO. Minimum shutter speed, we just can leave that on auto. Okay, next, white balance. We do wanna just leave it on auto white balance. Um, although, if I'm in the studio, that's gonna change for me. And then, picture style, I like to leave on neutral. Neutral, I don't like the camera um, kind of baking its presets into the image for me, so I always leave that on neutral. Clarity, I'm gonna leave the way it is. All this stuff, I leave the way it is. I like to have a mechanical shutter because I'm not doing uh, sports and things like that. Sometimes in the studio, I will put it on electronic first curtain just because it can interfere a little bit with certain studio lights. Um, the thing you want to watch out for with electronic shutter is that you can get a weird flickering effect sometimes. So just be beware of that if you're shooting under like fluorescent lights. Release shutter without card, shut that off if it's on. You don't want the camera to fire the shutter without a card in there because obviously you will wind up making the mistake of thinking there's a card in there and then you're not gonna realize it until you're home. Um, image stabilization mode I have on and only for shot. I don't want it draining the battery all the time so I have it set that way and then Touch shutter, I really don't like. Touch shutter, I disable because with, with touch shutter, if you just tap the, the screen of the camera, the back screen, it'll focus and fire the shutter. Uh, I don't like that. I like to compose with my eye and do it with the shutter button the old fashioned way. So I usually shut that off. Because then also if you inadvertently touch the screen, it's gonna send the focus where you don't want it. Okay. And here is exposure simulation. This is what I was talking about. When I'm shooting natural light, I want that enabled. I want to see what the final image is going to look like. All right, now let's talk about autofocus. And again, I have another video, I'll link this one too below, where I talk all about the autofocus systems in this camera. I love to shoot in servo. Now servo means the camera will continue to focus uh, as you keep your, your finger on the button halfway. In single shot, or what they call one shot, that means the camera will lock the focus and keep it locked there until you let go of the button and repress it. 
Servo is more like a tracking kind of method, which I never used in the past, but it works so well on this camera and on a lot of the newer mirrorless cameras that I basically leave it here. So this means the camera, if I have a subject moving around or if I'm moving around and my subject is in one spot, say, the camera will continue to track them. Then I have AF tracking method, which I showed you the button you can press on the back of the camera with the little focusing grid on it. You can go to the same menu, but I like to keep it in tracking. And then I track people. And eye detection, again, I have the button mapped for it. Continuous AF means the camera will just keep focusing without stopping, so shut that off because you don't need that, especially if you're walking around with the camera taking pictures of your family or whatever. It's just gonna keep trying to focus. Uh, touch and drag settings is cool because I enable that, and what that means is you can choose a section of the screen that if you put your finger on there and then slide it, it's going to automatically get a focusing point and slide it for you. So sometimes I use that. I usually leave that on. And then um, that's it in there, really. Now, in menu number three of the autofocus, you want to just leave it on number one, uh, which is multi-purpose. Generally, I leave it like that, and I find that works well. And I have the accelerate, decelerate. I have it slightly back to negative one. Um, but even if you just leave that on the normal setting, it's going to work great. Okay, next. Uh, let's see. A lot of this stuff, I'm not going to go over every one of these because I did, I, as I said, I do it in another video, but I usually like to keep the, uh, ver the focus point the same, whether you turn the camera horizontal or vertical, I find that to be easier. And then the rest of this, we can just kind of leave as it is. Now in the playback menu, which is the third menu, the only thing that I change in here is in the fourth menu, I like to make the magnification more. So you can use, when you're in playback, you can use the rear command dial, and if you spin it, it'll zoom in on your image. But I always find that I'm usually zooming in all the way, or almost all the way, so I have it set to eight times magnify. What that means is that when I change this, it's gonna automatically just jump really close, because that's usually what I'm doing. Everything else here I'm gonna leave, Wireless settings, um, we're not going to go over, but you can set up your cell phone so that you can have wireless uh, image sharing and also shooting. Now, this is very important. If we go into the wrench menu, you want to go into that first, um, I'm sorry, the second record options. Now, you see there's a camera and a video camera. So this, the camera means still, and the video camera obviously means video. So that... If we go into that second menu, here's what I like to do, especially when I'm doing anything that's professional. I set that to record to multiple. Now what that means is that, if I turn that off and I go into the quick menu, you can see it says raw one and raw two. That means both of my memory cards are going to record raw. So it's a backup. Now again, if you're shooting Anything important and you don't want to lose, you want to have the cards redundant like that. So record to multiple is how I set that. And then you can set it to which card you want. Like here, I can just have it set so that in playback, it's going to play from the, uh, um, the CF Express card, or you can have it play back from the SD card. That's up to you. And then you could do the same thing for video, which we're not talking about today. You can change the name of your folder. You can create a folder, which is cool too. So if you're recording, say I'm taking pictures of a client named Jim, I can set it to Jim and put the date and then it's automatically gonna put it in a folder that has that info. Next, all of this, I'm gonna leave basically the same. You can change your power, power saving mode. Uh, because I'm recording this tutorial, I have it set to 30 minutes but I usually have it set to uh, like five minutes or three minutes. Uh, and all of this, I'm gonna leave the way it is. This stuff too. Now here's an important menu in the wrench menu. The, the page five, number two, is how you set your custom shooting modes. So say you've 
mapped everything that we've just talked about. You've set all these buttons up and you're done. You can go into this menu then and you can register the settings or clear the settings if you want to change one and you can set up C1, 2, and 3. That's what that's about. Uh, next is just stuff that you don't really need or that I don't usually go into. You can add copyright information. Actually, I do have that. Um, you can put your name in there if you want to copyright the images and just have that embedded in the file. Okay, now let's go into this second uh, shooting menu. Um, and we have exposure increments we leave. I'm going to leave all of this stuff the way it is. All of this I'm going to leave the same. Now you can, in menu number three in this menu, you can change the, um, the way that the uh, command dials work. You can map one, you can change them from like here. You can change the direction that increases and decreases the value. You can also turn on and off and control the, um, change, I'm sorry, change the control ring direction, which is on the lens here. Uh, and you can customize these, these dials. So if you want your aperture and your shutter speed to be different dials, you can do all that there. I leave that just pretty much the way it is. I did map the uh, aperture for the control ring, um, but I honestly think it's probably, because the control ring moves so easily, it's probably best just to leave that off. Now, here's the most important thing, customize buttons. And this is what I was talking about from the beginning of this tutorial. All of those buttons that I mapped to do what I wanted to, you do it in here. So let me go back for a second. So this is the orange menu. It's menu number seven out of eight. And it's page three. You can see here, customize buttons. If you click in there, you can now see you have two um, two two columns. The first column is mapping for still shooting and the second column is mapping for video. So we're talking about still shooting here again. And here is where um, it will map all of those buttons for you. And actually, if you, use the, if you use the rear thumb wheel, it'll just scroll all the way down that first page. Um, now again, you can see how I have my shutter button is my shutter button. Movie button is the same, mode button is the same, uh, AF is the same. Now here you can see I mapped the star button for my ISO. So if you press that, it'll show you all the different options and you just scroll to the one you want and you hit OK to set it. Same thing here, AF point, selection, um, depth of field preview. I forgot to talk about that button. I don't ever use it, so you can map that how you want. Um, eye, eye focus. And then the joystick, which you can turn off if you want. So this is the one that you want on. Turn the joystick on, and then there's your movie modes. So there's your customized dials. Um, this stuff you don't have to worry about right away. And then this last menu with the star on it is actually very important too. This is where you can pick your favorite menu options and actually plug them into here. So this is a menu that I set up with most of my um, go-to settings. And honestly, because there's so many ways to get to these settings, um, I only usually use this for formatting the card. That's my quick format. So I just click on my, my menu and I go down and format the card. That's the most I use here because a lot of this stuff you can do through buttons, you can do through the touch screen. There's a ton of ways to do it. Um, and you can map and add or delete stuff into here. You'll see it says configure my menu two. That's page two. I can add to that page. Uh, and that's basically how it works. And there you have it. That's, that is how I have the camera set up. All right, now I know this wasn't the most exciting video, but it's very practical. And again, if you take the time to map out your camera like this, you're gonna save yourself so much time in the long run, so much headache, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So that's the whole point of this tutorial. I hope that you found it informational and useful and maybe even enjoyable. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and gently press that like button. We don't smash the like button around here. It's just a little gentle tap. 
and leave me a comment below if you have any other thoughts on what I talked about today. I know a lot of you probably have even better ways of mapping your camera or some tweaks and hacks that I might know about. So go ahead and, and throw that into the comment section. And here's wishing you an awesome day. Go out and take some great pictures, everyone. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.